I'm gonna put this uh, tower back a little bit. Back a little bit. Well, there's gonna be some grass there too. Um. Yeah. You can still put grass. I just think it would look better a little bit farther back. And if you guys didn't know, me and Melfan are really big on aesthetics. Probably Melfan is more on aesthetics than me. Well, and so far, I think this is a really great relay out for a Supercross. I'm really happy about it. Yeah, I am too. I am too. <sighs> Okay, remember the tips that we talked about in earlier episodes. About bordering, about measurement is key, using the block 4x4 four four or 2x4. Four. Try to, on long straightaways, what's it called, on the long sections, to add braces or some, to add some space on the outside so people who are behind can be able to be passed. If they might mess up or they're really slow, so no wrecks happen. Um, short straightaways, um, we haven't gotten to that yet, but berms are also really important. You really need berms for the, to turn 180 degrees and to keep your speed. And remember to take the top of the berm and to almost take it the full way through in order to get all of your speed. I forgot to put sandbags to put straight back over here. Oh, wait, I'm not going to put the sandbags there. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm gonna put the sandbags on the outside. Oh yeah, I, I should notice on that. how high you put these right over here, the columns. Kind of off the ground. Kinda keeps it from like when you hit it. Here I'll I'll show you. I'll show them so it's not. Oh, I'm just on top of it. See how nice the sandbags look? Now, watch here. You don't really bounce over them if they're up a little tiny bit. Let's see. This is what it looks like on the ground. And it's just a lot better to put them on the side. It's hardly noticeable, too. You can't even really tell it's floating. Yeah, I'm going to race the layout put on. I'm going to fix up that one berm. Yeah, we still need to smoothen out all the berms. This one right here, I think it's good. And here's the tip. A lot of people choose to smoothen out burns at the end, but that's a, not something good to do. The reason why is that in realistic Supercross, you want to be able to, t to make the jumps so that the, the only one of the only ways you can do it is at max speed. But in order to get the max speed, you have to smoothen out the berms so you can take the berms really fast, and then test out your jumps while taking the berms fast. So you can reward those who know how to race the supercross and kind of help it helps people get better at racing supercross in a sense, because realistic supercross is extremely competitive. Ooh, got a little lag there. Now uh, here's something I actually wanted to like see. The comments like post what kind of music you guys want to see in our videos. Like, you guys want like screamo, uh dubstep. Every, everyone wants dubstep. <laughs> Alright, I'm just I'm just gonna see. And blowdown just got on. And you notice how that sandbag section looks over there for the bordering? Okay. Actually, I might use sandbags not at this part because now you don't have enough room to drive because of the sandbags. Like, if I put a mongoose here and try to drive on the outside here, you really don't have that much room. Yeah, I'd say we use this part right here. 
Okay. Am I taking the berm like a pro? Max speed like a pro. You notice how much speed I caught off of that berm? I believe this is the last burn I still mean to do that rock burn. Not very good with rock burn, so. Oh, man, you wanna do that one? Yeah. I'll do that after this little sandbags. Okay. I actually was taught how to do rock berms by someone named by the name of Shadow Eclipix. Really awesome supercross maker. Really awesome realistic supercross maker. <laughs> I didn't even. The only thing I got taught about making racetracks was roller coaster. And by my buddy here, how with me? Yeah. Awesome. I'm always down to help anyone who asks. Like, um, today, especially, I held a little showcase lobby. I let everyone show their maps. Who asked? And after that, I held a forge session for, and I let people ask me questions about how to forge certain things, and it it really helps people out. And just feel free if you have any questions about anything, just to ask me, KSI Milkman. I won't ever turn anyone down. Yeah, KSI Milkman is one of the nicest people I know. Right? It's just I don't want to be like those people who, like when I first started forging, never who never wanted to bother helping me, or just call me a garbage forger or anything. And I just don't want to be that person. I want to yeah. be a good influence. Wait, everybody on on transforges are people that don't really like bring you down. So. Yeah, see, I like the sandbags better at that section. I don't, I don't know what's happening here. You know? This this firm won't let me smooth it out like I normally do. So I have to go to to uh. See, for I guess for this side, I'll after you're done smoothing that berm, Do you want to help me out and put some columns on this little area that I'm working on? Yeah. We have to go off on this for a Now, on an SX, when you use rotation snap, it doesn't really matter because you can't really tell the difference. So. Actually, the best thing to use on berms is freehand, but you rotation snap 15 degrees the first piece and put it in the center. And you freehand the other pieces to go with the berm. I didn't really do that, so I'm not going to do that now. <laughs> That's another KSI moment. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get when uh, two forges go together to make a map. And that, and yeah, that's another thing. We're doing every, every uh, let's build with two or three forges. Three forges. Just so you guys can see on um, like many people on how many people you can have with the forge. And another good thing is if you're one of those people who does who likes to forge by themselves, maybe you should just like maybe forge with someone. Showing how um basically when you forge with someone else, you get to see their forging styles. And it helps you come up with different things like for instance, me and I am probable. We forged the map JPM together. Really great map. But we had completely and, different forging styles, and we learned a lot from each other. Yeah, same with me and Mel Mi Mythic Mayhem. Um, we we're forging three maps together for this channel, the competition that we that we entered. So yeah, we got to see everybody. 
like each other's sporting style. His sporting style, like he he likes it to make it like really really smooth, and mine is just like consistency. And when you mix those two together, you get smooth and consistent, which is some of the best things for double wides and coasters to have. And you learn a lot from each other by forging with each other. Like, for instance, um, one way you won't learn is um, when I forge the map, the Devil Rejects, me and a guy named Reset Gamertag have basically the very same forging style, very same forging ideas. And sometimes that's really good because then um, you could forge, not really worry about what the other person's doing. And you guys will be able to forge a map really fast, really great map. Like the Devil Rejects. Um, it's a really great map, in my opinion. We both think it's our best, or one of our best. And, and if you can find someone with the, great, the same forging style, you should forge with that person a lot. And, you'll and one thing I want to say, if you forge a lot with like people, it doesn't mean that you're a bad forger. Yes. It just means that you like forging with other people. Okay, J-Dog, am I a bad forger? No, you're not. You're actually okay. one of my favorites. Guess oh. how many maps I've built by myself. One or two. Exactly. Sunrise Manor SX is one of the maps I built by myself. Air and Superiority. Air Superiority, those are my only two I built by myself. Even maps like Commotion had a tiny bit of help from DB Shadow Wolf because I ran out of an idea. And like Commotion too, Cowboy's Baby helped with the turnaround. Orcaball helped a little straightaway. Rookies and Milk helped with the part after the kill ball. Yeah. Um, just like um, it, you can, sometimes it's great to forge by yourself. Honestly, I think it's boring. I always have to forge with someone. And you notice how the people who usually forge by themselves have quit by now? Yeah. Well, not really private parts. He, he's, uh, he's really well. Of, he's really well, but he's kind of stopping making racetracks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, we're going to have to stop this episode. So, yeah. stay tuned for the next episodes.